guys, this is Ethnic Green Living here and I am here today with the beautiful Shasta again from Abiding Farmhouse and today we are just simply talking about and sharing our faith and we're not just doing it together, we're doing it with a group of other wonderful um, Christ-filled spirit-led women so be sure to check out the playlist in the description box. That way when you're done watching my video and Shasta's videos, you can go ahead and check out some of the other ladies because they truly are amazing women and I know they have been praying with and for me and for that I am grateful. So <laughs> I'm just going to share a little bit about my testimony, a little bit about my faith and that is going to be my video for today. So hope you guys are doing well to my new subscribers. And friends, welcome to my returning ones. Hello, family. You make this video a little bit easier to make. So thank you for just being here, encouraging me, and supporting me along the way. So I don't really remember a day of not knowing of Christ or knowing Christ because I pred um, predominantly and pretty much grew up going to church every Sunday. My grandmother um, was a deaconess. My grandfather was a deacon of a local church. And so we went to church. <laughs> my aunt, my great aunts and all of those, um, we all went together. Um, I lived a lot with my grandma and um, you know, I went with her to choir practice. We went to all the rainbow teas and holidays and all the church anniversaries and we were at Bible study and Sunday school and church. So I was always there and so I always had a reverence and a knowledge of who Christ was from the very beginning, there was never a time that I can remember that I didn't know him because the opportunity was there. I will say, however, there were lots of struggles with him along the way. I saw a lot of hypocrisy. I saw a lot of double standards. I saw a lot of um, people in leadership getting over you know, on others and I saw that certain people and certain groups were treated certain ways while other people and other groups were not treated um, the same. We're talking about in church, we're talking about favoritism from pastors and um, leaders in the church to certain families, but then to other families, they would mistreat them. And I didn't feel that represented Christ well at all. And it was hard to feel you have a true and pure heart and um worship when you see all these people in here and you know they were this one was just smoking on a parking lot this one was just doing this this one was just doing this one this one's beating his wife this one's cheating you know, when you know all these things it's really hard and so i really just had to get to a place where i only it's just me and the lord it's me and the lord and whatever's happening around me whoever's doing what i can't be responsible for them because they're gonna have to be held accountable for what they're doing and so that is my story and that is a lot of my upbringings all the way until graduation um and i mean like i said the struggle was real i had struggles with singing with ursher and just different things with you know people um just give me a hard time <laughs> just give me a hard time and it didn't stop there you know I had those same problems with a couple of other ministries that I went to as well you know so I've just really seen a lot and this really goes with church hurt and I'm not saying this to say yeah see church hurt is so big and that's why most people leave the church the church hurt and she said no I'm sharing that because I do think that there should be a grace um, I've had first ladies um, lie on me and, you know, say certain things and try to create tensions. Um, I've just had a lot of issues. But because it's not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and because I knew that it wasn't the person, but it was the enemy, um, or it was a spirit, or it was something working within the person to take my you know to distract me to get me off course to keep me from focusing on god i tried hard to overlook that and um you know just not 
let that be my focal point and really let Christ be the focal point. And it was really hard. And I can't tell you how many days I had anxiety even walking into the church. The church is supposed to be the house of the Lord. And there is where you're supposed to feel love, joy, and peace, and all these fruits of the Spirit and other things. But that's not what I felt when I walked into a lot of churches because there's so much judgment. There's so much judgment with what you're wearing and how you look and how you wore your hair. And did you look well enough? And did you do this well enough? And it's like... What about the pure in heart? The pure in heart shall see God. It's, it, it, you know, it shouldn't matter what I look like. It shouldn't matter what I have. That was another issue too because I didn't have fancy cars or certain things like certain other people. But God doesn't look at those things. He looks at the heart of man. And so I want to speak to you if you had some extreme church hurt, you know, like I've had. And I didn't really share any examples because I don't want to focus on, I don't want to give a glory to that because, man, I can tell you some stories and you'll be like, What? But I don't want to do that. I want to just keep the focus and the attention on the Lord. I want to let you know that He is what we do all we do for. And so it doesn't really matter what they say, what they do, how they lie on you, how they mistreat you. Did Christ not suffer? Did Christ not endure? You know, did they talk about Him? Did they criticize Him? In fact, they beat Him, they killed Him, they nailed Him to a cross. And so if he must experience these things, what makes us think that we won't? That's why he says, count up the cross, you know, count up the cost and then follow me. And so I don't know if it was just in my mind that because, you know, I serve the Lord and because I went to all these things and because, you know, I was faithful, truly faithful and committed that that wouldn't be my portion. But what I realized is that's not the truth, and that's why I wanted to share this. Sometimes that, that's it all the more. So you come to a point where, do I hold true to this teaching or do I turn away? And for me, I chose to hold true um, when I got to my, you know, 17, 18, 19. Those were the years that were like, hmm, you know what, I've had enough of these hypocritical judgmental people <laughs> I'm done but it's like how can you give up on him because of them no like it was the people not Christ Christ didn't do those things it was the people and so um I had to just ask Christ to forgive me for my actions and thoughts and I just had to say give me a clean give me a clean heart Okay, give me pure hands and a clean heart and forgive me, you know, for being angry at them for the way they treated me. You know, he will take care of them. They will get their just reward. And all I have to do is just keep doing what I know to be true. And that's all you have to do, too. So if you're in a situation where you're experiencing church hurt or you're being mistreated, um, I want to say to you, just be encouraged and know that God has you in that fire for a reason. You know, when you think about all the hard times these different characters had all throughout the Bible, he only gave his selected, his hand picked the biggest struggles. Look at Job, look at Jonah, look at Noah, look at Joseph. All these people had to endure, like, oh, I'm sure Joseph wanted to get even. You know, I'm sure Job wanted to get well. You know, I'm sure those Hebrew boys wanted to get out that fire. But those were the situations that the Lord placed them in so that he can get the glory out of their lives. And for me, church hurt and seeing all these issues in the church is the place that God had me. Truly, that has probably been the biggest issue of my entire life. The church. Not, not anything else but the church. But I know it's for a reason. I know it's for purpose. And I know that God is going to reveal what he's doing if I'm just faithful and still. And just wait and see what he has in store. So I want to talk a little bit about staying on track. Because it's one thing to know him. It's another thing to have a relationship with him. And so for me... I'm not gonna lie. I pretty much fail at my Bible reading. <laughs> my friends are reading every single day and multiple times a day and highlighting a journal. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying, but you know, that's just not necessarily my strong suit. So I do try to listen to the Bible. Um, and then I try to get in as many um, 
you know, passages and scriptures as I can throughout the week. But something I also do is I do devotionals. And I know it's not the same, but you know what? A step is better than nothing. So, and I also listen to um, some certain sermons on the um, YouTube or on the radio or different things like that. And something I've been doing for a long time has been having um, just worship sessions. Sessions where I just sing, where I pretend that I am standing before the Father and I am just worshiping and singing and pouring out my whole life to him with this song. What shall I offer a king? What can I give a king? I don't have money. <laughs> There's none, you know? Silver and gold I have not, but such I have I give. And all I have is my voice and my words. And oh, trust me, that's come under attack before. But that is what I give, what I have. And so I just give all of myself to him and just worship and song. And worship is very important. If you um, have read in... I think it's Chronicles, um, where King Jehoshaphat was going out to battle. And just multiple times throughout the Bible, you will see that they sent the worshipers out before they even sent the army. You send out some singing and musicians before you send out an army? Yes, that's what the scripture tells us. So that makes, that lets me know, it makes me believe that there must be really something special about worship that touches the heart of God. And so that is something that I have frequently and it's one of my favorite times ever. It's just having that intimate worship time with the Father. And something else that I've been doing, um, it's just kind of maintain my relationship with the Lord. I have been fasting and there's different scriptures on fast. There's one that says, and when you fast, meaning something that you should be doing regularly um, and also um, there's another one that talks about these some things only come out by praying and for fasting so and then Daniel fasted you know when, when it was um, he, he's famous for the you know 21 day fast and again she hosted that um, fasted and I think he called the land to fast and you know he basically was saying I don't know what to do my eyes upon you and the Lord kind of replied to him and said, you won't even have to fight this battle. Just kind of stand still. And so um, for me, seeing those examples in the Bible let me know that when I'm having a hard time, when I'm struggling, um, when things are not going my way, that is when I need to fast. It helps you see clearly. It helps you focus on what's really important. And I don't want you to think that I'm some perfect person um, or, or anything like that. Um, let me tell you, fasting is hard. I have been doing it for over 10 years. It started with just a once a year Daniel fast. Um, and then I just decided on my own here and there to just do it. Um, and then about eight years ago, I decided I wanted to do a whole life fast. And so I set on a, um, I gave up meat as a permanent fast until the Lord. So that's how I really went vegan vegetarian I really didn't share that with many um, but that was my fast you know to him unto the Lord and um, you know from there I've done seven days you know uh, only water I've done days with no water I've just done all kinds of fast depending on what I needed and what I wanted in my life and and how close I wanted to be to him and you know what I was um, desiring what I was seeking and so currently actually as this video is being made I think this is my third week on a 40-day fast and uh, I am NOT eating anything from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. so basically I just have supper and then that's it so you know I have obviously lost a little bit of weight um, but I feel lighter and I just feel clear I have more clarity and we sometimes just need to stop from all the busy crazy and chaos and just quiet ourselves so that we can hear more for you know more from the Lord 
and I don't want you to think that all the fads are so easy. Let me get this guy back here. That's a soldier making all this noise. The first time I tried it, oh my gosh, I felt miserably like I just ate something. You know, um, it was really hard when I first started because it wasn't a lifestyle um, to me. And so <laughs> it hasn't always been easy. And I'll tell you, I think this probably is one of the most intense fasts that I've been on in a while. I think from the moment I started, troubles <laughs> just broke out in my life and all types of storms came to me when I embarked upon this, this last fast. But you know what? It just means I'm close to a breakthrough and breakthrough you know, people talk about, I want to break through and, you know, the Lord delivered me and all this, but we don't always understand what breakthrough really is. And so I'm not going to uh, hold you too long. And hopefully this is encouraging to you. It won't fit for everybody. I understand that. But this will reach a certain amount of you and resonate good and well within you because your struggle is my struggle. If you've never even known Christ until yesterday or, um, you know, you've been that person, that family in the church who's had everything handed to you and kind of catered and loved on because of who you are. You can't relate to this, but this will reach who it's intended um, to reach. But I just want to um, share one more thing with you. Okay, so I want to share with you about breakthrough. Because when you're fasting, when you're seeking the Lord and just trying to get closer to Him, there are all these obstacles and things that obviously want to prevent that from happening. And here you are trying to get closer and closer to Christ, to your destiny, um, to the purpose, to find out why you were even created to the Creator Himself. And you will see that there are these, these walls that you hit almost. So if you want to look at it this way, there are these walls. So we say we want breakthrough in our lives. And sometimes we think that the wall will just go away. And that could happen. But lots of times you literally have to break through the wall. And so breakthrough is a, look at that. There's an impact. There's a turbulence, there's a shattering, there's a breaking. It's not some beautiful thing like we, like sometimes we think it is or like I thought it was. It is, it is war. And for somebody like me who's very peaceful and very like, no, no, no. <laughs> that has probably been one of the hardest things, spiritual things like that, because it's like, no, well, maybe. <laughs> And it's like, no, well, baby, I'm getting to the other side. Get out of my way. By all means necessary, I'm going to get through here. <laughs> anyway, um, this is my testimony. This is my story to Christ, knowing Christ, staying with Christ, and choosing him through this busy and chaotic and troublesome world that we are living in currently. And for me... I have led people to Christ. I have led people to know the Lord. And for that, I'm extremely thankful, grateful, and I just praise the Lord. However, um, there are more people that need to hear about this God who can help you from this church hurt, who can help you from, you know, abusive situations, who can help you from um, just poverty who can help you from lack from low confidence low self-esteem from drug addictions from you know pornography from all these things that we wrestle with from overeating you know from eating disorders there is a god that can help you with that that can deliver you and help you achieve breakthrough from that area of you know you hitting those obstacles to you know what i'm I'm over it and I'm thriving into my life because we need those things gone so that we can be the best that we can be for the Lord. And so I just want to be a help, a tip and a light for those people. And so I don't want it to be about my followers and my subscribers, but I really want it to be more so about the souls because that's really ultimately what it's about. It's our souls and our souls being saved you know it's about us being able to be with the father you know so I'm gonna just stop there and I want to know what your testimony is I want to know about 
your faith. I want to know what was that one thing that helped you be strong and just continue to push along. Like I've said in this video, um, my struggle was really just church hurt. Um, it was just the different ministries that I have, you know, been to. But I've learned so many lessons. I've grown so much. And I know what things I need to pray for. And I know more now than ever how to pray for certain leaders and for leaders' children and for leaders' families. Because the reality is a lot of times they lash out and they act a certain way um, because of the way they feel about having their parents do so much for other people and always taking care of other people and kind of neglecting them and leaving them on a back burner, if you really will, um, and if you were to be honest. Because a lot of times pastor kids have the reputation of being fighters and, you know, just being mean and all these things. But why? They are. Trust me. <laughs> I've seen it firsthand. I mean, they curse. Some of them can curse like sailors and all sorts of things. But what is the true reason behind it? And what is the true reason behind why maybe some first ladies act the way they act in the church? They really just miss their husbands. They want their husbands home. I'm not justifying anything. I'm just simply saying we need to extend grace to um, these people in leadership. And they really need our prayers more now than ever. And I just pray that if you have experienced some sort of uh, church hurt or anything like that, that you don't let it keep you away from your relationship with God. Because your relationship with God is totally separate than your relationship with man. Yes, we are to, you know, assemble together and all those things. But you know what? There's assemblies all around the place. And if you don't have one that works for you, or if you have one that didn't treat you right or mishand you know, that mishandled you, I apologize to you. I sincerely apologize that you had to go through that. And I hope that's enough for you to forgive and to pick up the pieces and try again at another ministry, try again somewhere else. Um, so that you can maintain your connection uh, with the Lord. And so that is really just what I want this whole video to be about summed up. is It's really about your relationship with the Lord, not man. Don't look to man to save you, to help you, to heal you. We don't want to make man your God. Just keep your eye on God and forgive man because we're flawed. That's it. We're flawed. And we're going to mess up and we're going to fail every time. And so some of the hurt, people don't even know they even hurt you. I remember a lady said something to me one time. And when I told her what she said, she swore she never even said it and had no idea. And I carried what she said for so long because it hurt so bad. It was a huge cut, especially from who it was coming from. And especially with my uh, maturity level in the ministry at that time. And so to have a leader say something like that to you was pretty um, hurtful. But she's not my God. My focus is not her. My focus is God. And so I just think when you can understand that, you really, really, really can um, grasp some things and really just understand it's not about us, but it's about Christ. So let's just keep the main thing the main thing. Release and let go of some things. And thank you for watching.